This is chapter four, Atoms and Elements, and in today's PowerPoint, we're going to be looking at section seven and learning about atomic number and mass number. So the atomic number is a characteristic of a particular element. All of the elements in the periodic table have a different atomic number, and the atomic number is related to the number of protons in the nucleus. When I say the atomic number is related to the number of protons in the atom, what I really mean is the atomic number is exactly equal to the number of protons in the atom. Uh, so it's always a whole number, right? And you just count the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, and that is the atomic number. You can't have half a proton or a quarter of a proton, so there's no other atomic numbers or no other elements in between the elements that we know of. There could be ones in addition to the elements on the periodic table if you add more protons at the end, um, but you can't, for instance, ever find an element between hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen has one proton, helium has two protons. That's why their atomic number is one and two. So you're never going to find an element with an atomic number of 1.5 or 1.36 or anything like that. Uh, all of the atoms of a particular element have the same atomic number. They have the same number of protons in the nucleus. That's what makes them that element. So every atom of hydrogen has one proton in its nucleus. You can change the number of electrons, and you can change the number of neutrons, and you can, and it'll still be hydrogen, although a different kind. We'll learn about what that changes later on. But as long as it has one proton in the nucleus, it is hydrogen. If it has two protons in the nucleus, it is helium, no matter what other electrons or neutrons are present, right? and so on from there. And on most periodic tables, the atomic number is written right above the symbol, either above the symbol or sometimes up and to the left, but usually it's the most prominent number in the box in the periodic table. So atomic number equals the number of protons. For hydrogen, it's one proton, so it's atomic number one. For carbon, it's six protons, so it's atomic number six. For copper, it's 29 protons, so it's atomic number 29. Another thing about atoms is that when we use the word atom, we generally mean a neutral particle. Okay, so if we're talking about atoms, we're talking about a particle that has no charge, a fundamental particle of an element that has no charge. If we're talking about a charged particle, we use the word ion. Okay? But for all atoms and ions, the charge is the sum of the charge of the protons and the charge of the electrons. So since the proton and the electron have equal and opposite charges, right? proton is plus one and electron is minus one, then you can really just add up the number of protons and then subtract the number of electrons and you'll find the charge. So for instance, in a neutral atom of hydrogen, you have one proton. You also have one electron. One proton minus one electron gives you zero. So the charge on a neutral atom is zero. If you were to get rid of that electron, then you would have one proton and you would be subtracting zero because you're, you no longer have that electron. And so the charge would be plus one, right? So when you get rid of electrons, you're left with a positive charge. For neutral atoms, the net charge is always zero. And so for a neutral atom, the number of protons is exactly equal to the number of electrons. They're exactly balanced. Here we have a chart with some elements and it's asking us to fill in the numbers for some of these things, right? The atomic number, the number of protons, and the number of electrons. So for a question like this, you definitely need the periodic table. On any exam, you'll be given the periodic table in this course, right? Uh, so you should get used to consulting it for situations like this. So let's see how this works. So the first element we're looking at is nitrogen, and we're gonna wanna know the atomic number, the number of protons, and the number of electrons. So I'm gonna consult my periodic table here, which I have through Google, right? I Google periodic table, and this came up, or you can go straight to ptable. Dot com, and you see here that nitrogen is atomic number seven. Okay, atomic number seven is the number above the N in the box. So let's go back to our slides, and we can see that nitrogen is atomic number seven. And what that means is that nitrogen has seven protons in its nucleus. And since we're talking about atoms here and we haven't specified a charge or mentioned anything about ions, it's safe to assume that we're talking about a neutral atom of nitrogen, which means that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. 
plus seven protons minus seven electrons gives you a charge of zero. So the charge is exactly balanced out between the protons and the electrons. And so this is what it's going to be for all of the entries in this table, right? We're talking about neutral atoms and atomic numbers the same as protons. And since they're neutral, protons the same as electrons. So once we've looked up the atomic number, then we've really answered the question across the row. So the next two atoms are zinc and sulfur. So let's just look at the periodic table to see those, right? And so we have zinc here, that's atomic number 30. And we have sulfur here, and that's atomic number 16. So we can go back and finish filling this in. It's very simple. Oops, so this was seven. Zinc has an atomic number 30 and sulfur has an atomic number of 16. So zinc has 30 protons in its nucleus, sulfur has 16 protons in its nucleus, a neutral atom of zinc has 30 electrons, and a neutral atom of sulfur has 16 electrons. The mass number of an atom represents the number of particles in the nucleus, right? And the reason it's called the mass number is because the particles in the nucleus, the protons and neutrons, are the particles that have most of the mass of an atom. So you remember from the properties of the subatomic particles that we learned previously that a proton has a mass of about 1.007 AMU, and a neutron has a mass of about 1.008 AMU. So if we round those a little bit, then they each have a mass of one. And so we can just add them together, the number of protons and neutrons, and that's roughly the mass number. It's a little bit different in reality because when nucleons, neutrons, and protons combine together, there's a little bit of conversion of mass to energy according to relativity. So the actual mass is not exactly going to be equal to the mass number for any particular isotope. But it is still a useful number that tells us the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay? So the mass number equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Again, since we're just counting particles, this is always a whole number. It's an exact whole number. Okay? You can't have half a proton. You can't have half a neutron. The, the fractions that are part of the mass, we're just rounding those off and not considering those when we deal with the mass number. Okay? So again, it's not the exact mass of the atom because the proton and neutron do not weigh exactly one atomic mass unit, but it's close. Okay, very close, usually to 0.99 or 0.98. Okay? Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is that the masses on the periodic table are not the mass number, typically. right? And they're also not the mass of any individual atom of that element type. What they are is a weighted average of all the different isotopes of a particular element. And we'll learn what an isotope is a little bit later. So here are the compositions of some different atoms that you might find, right? These are all particular elements from the periodic table. So for example, hydrogen, I mentioned, has the atomic number of one, right? Which means it has a one proton in its nucleus. A uh, typical atom of hydrogen has a mass number of one. Now, not every atom of hydrogen has this same mass number. There are atoms of hydrogen that have a mass number of two or three, maybe more in, you know, in a lab somewhere. Uh, but typically, most hydrogen has a mass number of one, which means since it has to have a proton in its nucleus in order to be called hydrogen, that mass number all comes from the proton. So this type of hydrogen has to have zero neutrons because one plus zero equals one, right? The number of protons plus the number of neutrons have to equal the mass number. So if it has a proton, it can't have a neutron. And since we're talking about a neutral atom, we didn't specify any charge or call it an ion or anything like that, so we can assume that the number of electrons is just equal to the number of protons. Okay? So for all of these, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons, because they're all assumed to be neutral atoms. And the other thing is that for each of these, the sum of the proton column and the neutron column gives you the mass number column. So 79 plus 118 equals 197. 26 plus 32 equals 58, right, and so on. And these numbers in the proton column here are exactly equal to the atomic number because the atomic number equals the number of protons. Right? So this summarizes those points, right? The number of protons equals the atomic number. Good, simple enough. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. 
still not so bad. And that means that if we know the mass number and we know the atomic number, we can calculate the number of neutrons by just rearranging that previous equation. Okay, so these two are really the same, just rearranged a little bit. Okay. Now, again, mass numbers are given for specific isotopes only. Isotopes are atoms that are the same element, so they have the same number of protons, but they have different mass numbers, so they have different numbers of neutrons. So when we're talking about the mass number of an element, well, again, not every atom of hydrogen has the same number of neutrons in its nucleus, and so different atoms of hydrogen potentially have different mass numbers, even though they are both hydrogen. So here's an example, an atom of lead has a mass number of 207. Okay, So the mass number is 207. And then the three questions it asks are, how many protons are in the nucleus? How many neutrons are in the nucleus? And how many electrons are in the atom? So from the mass number, that tells us the number of protons plus neutrons, right? So protons plus neutrons equals 207. Unfortunately, that's not enough to answer this question. But what is enough is that we're told that this is an atom of lead. So if we know the name of the element, we can just look on our periodic table and we see that lead has an atomic number of 82. Okay, so the atomic number of lead is 82. Okay, it's on the right hand side. It is in group 14 or 4A and period six, lead, PB. Okay, so if the atomic number is 82, well then the number of protons is just 82. And then the number of neutrons is the mass number 207 minus the number of protons, which is 82. And so that equals 118 plus 7, 125. Okay, so this nucleus for this particular type of lead, this particular isotope of lead, has 82 protons because it's lead, so it'll always have 82 protons. And this one in particular has 125 neutrons. So how many electrons are in it? Well, again, we're talking about an atom, which assumes that the charge is neutral, right? Charge equals zero. So what that means is that the number of protons equals the number of electrons. And so the number of electrons equals 82.